Welcome, everyone, to this edition of City Chat with City Magazine. I'm Kylie Harmon, General Manager of City Magazine, and today we are visiting with Chris Volk, and you are the owner of the Pita Pit. Welcome. That's right. Wave Good to the to camera. Say hello. Pita Pit. Pita, yes, that commercial. <laughs> Who is that guy that does Pita Pit? Uh, that's Who, one of my roommates, and he's also an employee of the store. Well, I would hope that he is an employee. Pita Pat is what we call him. Pita Pat. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. So what does he do for you? Uh, he's just a worker. He's a Pita Roller. Very cool. He's a hard worker, though. Very cool. So now, tell me, how did you get to open a pita pit? I mean, what was it that made you want to open a pita pit? Well, when I was in the Army, I kind of, like a year three or so in my time in the service, I kind of started looking into opening my own business. And I started looking at franchise options, and I noticed that a lot of franchises offered military discounts. Oh, that's good to know. And I had a friend that was looking through the list with me, too, and she was like, Pita Pit. And I was like, what is the Pita Pit? She's like, get out of here. You get in the car. We're going We're going down to down to the Pita Pit right now. And where were you at at the time? Uh, Kingston, Ontario, actually. I was stationed in Fort Drum, New York. It's like right along the Canadian border. Oh, wow. Okay. And just so happened the Pita Pit she took me to was the first ever Pita Pit in the world. And she kind of knew the co-founders. She kind of went to college with them and stuff. And... So just kind of I took the first bite and I was like this place is awesome it's amazing there's nothing in Bismarck Are you kidding me and so now you're originally from this area yeah originally from Hazen from Hazen okay so you're familiar with the Bismarck and did you did you want to come back to Bismarck and I do did. the business in Bismarck okay yeah, I did I just knew Bismarck's just a big growing city it's the whole state's growing you know mm-hmm. and the economy's great out here so it's a no-brainer to come back. So now what was it about the Pita Pit franchise that appealed to you besides the military discount? I mean, I know there's a lot of other franchises too. I mean, what other ones did you look at as well? Um, I, I just looked at other, I don't really know what franchise. I just was looking at lists of franchises, and then this one stuck out. And when she introduced me to it, I was just like, wow, this is awesome. It's just great food, and it's healthy. So when did you start this whole process? Um... Must have been January, January 2008, I want to say it was. So a while ago. Yeah, I I got out of the Army in October 2008. Okay. And then uh, right after I got out of the the Army, I went down, did a meet and greet. I applied for the franchise, did a meet and greet with the corporate out in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Mm -hmm. And then they approved me, and I bought the rights in November 2008. Bought the rights for just... For Bismarck. For the Bismarck area, okay. And... And then the real estate process started, looking for that right location. Okay. And that was just hectic because Bismarck's, it's growing, and it's so hard to find a good location. Okay. Initially, we wanted to be south for my first store, Mm -hmm. and we worked on a couple deals, and we just couldn't get nothing to go through. And uh, there's a little secret. There's a spot going to be opening up down south that we found out about. So I was like, well, I want to open a store up north anyways, eventually so let's just go up north and there was a spot available so we opened up and the spot down south still kind of available so there's a deal in the in, in the, the works. works right now for a south location when do you won't be for like another nine to twelve months okay so probably about another year yeah. or so yeah. so now you're actually in the old what was the old quizno space up yep. north yep so how's that been for you up in that area oh it's great uh the North Bismarck is just, it's crazy, the business up there. There's there's a lot of big businesses up there, and there's a lot of uh, apartments, new apartments going up. So the the demographics, are, they just they met the needs of what I wanted. Granted, the Pita Pit up there isn't open late. Most Pita Pits around the country are open late, late night stuff, you know, until mm-hmm. like 2 a.m. after the bar is closed. They want to get that bar rush. But there's just no market up there for it. Business is closed down, you know, around 5, 6 o'clock. It's just How late are you guys open till up there? When are, when are your hours? Uh, we're open from ten thirty to ten p.m. Monday through Monday through Sunday. Oh, Seven every single day. Yep. Very cool. Except so, on certain holidays. Oh, of of course, like yeah. kind of like any other holiday. Yep. So back in two thousand eight, you bought the rights, and you're looking for location, location. When did you guys finally decide on the north location? And from then, how long did it take you to get up and running? Um, we finally decided on that north location. I want to say it was. Oh, it must have been like December-ish, I think, of 2010. Okay. And we found out that, that we were, I was done with the, the south location because we found out there was going to be a spot available within the next 
year or two, but I didn't want to wait to get that first store open. So then we looked north and we closed on a deal. I want to say it was like December 2010. And you opened when? And then we opened April 18th. Very cool. So almost around five months or so. Yeah. Yeah. Some things drag on and it's just kind of, I don't know, things can get confusing sometimes and you never know what kind of problems you run into. Yeah, it's kind of like any small business. Yeah. There's always those different scenarios. So what was it like when you first decided, I mean, besides the location, what else did you do in order to prepare um, opening up a business? Um, just lots of research, tons of research. You know, I was fortunate enough to the, the realtor that I used, you know, he taught me a lot because he actually used to own a franchise sandwich shop here in town. Okay. And, you know, he helped me out a lot and just taught me about demographics and the importance of certain demographics you know that you need to look for because these are going to be your customers Mm -hmm. and and he's in the real estate business now commercial real estate so he knows what to look for he knows where to go and very cool so um tell me a little bit about the pita pit for those people who haven't gone there and tried it i mean what is it that you all offer at the pita pit uh pita pit is just a healthy place to eat it's pita bread it's not sub big sub sandwich bread um, we just, we have 25 different pitas on the menu, you know, and just like, I, I looked up some quick facts. Uh, we got our nutrition menu in and 19 out of our 25 pitas are under 500 calories. Wow. That's very cool. And out of those 19 pitas, 14 of those pitas are under 400 calories. Holy, that's awesome. And out of those 14 pitas, <laughs> 10 of those pitas are under 350 calories. So that's perfect. I yeah, mean, right around 350 calories yeah. is kind of where you should be for a lunch and with a good yeah. mixture. And and it's all low-fat, lean, fresh vegetables, you know. Granted, the pitas, that these calorie counts are recommended if you if we make them the way you're supposed, supposed to, to make them. I mean, you can load whatever you want into them. Okay. You stuff whatever you want into them. We call it stuff in the pitas. Stuff in the pitas. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. So now you guys also, um, here in September, you know, you were coming out with this promotion of salads. Yep. So tell me about get, that. You can get any pita, and this is this has always been like this. We're just kind of promoting it to get the word out there that more people know about it. You just say, I want, like, if you're going to order chicken crave, I want a chicken crave fork style. And that's what they're called. And it's just any pita that you want, you can get in a salad form. So it, you ditch the pita bread, and it's just a salad with the same meats same toppings, whatever you want, fully customizable. Very cool. So, no, tell me, what has been, like, I mean, you're a young entrepreneur. You just are in, actually, this issue's uh, the, yes, uh, young entrepreneurial success story opening up. So you're under 30 years of age. Yeah. We know that. Yeah. You don't have to say your age if you don't <laughs> want to. But what has been the most challenging part because you are a young entrepreneur? Um, I think it's been a lot of, like, you're, I don't know how to explain it. You're young, so a lot of people don't take you as serious. Mm-hmm. Like, if, you know, I have big, big dreams for this, for this company. And that's kind of what I think. You'd run into people and they just kind of would brush you off, be like, ah, whatever, you're young. You don't know what you're talking about. You know, mm-hmm. and it, just keep going. That's what I did. I just, like, I'm not going to take no for an answer from nobody. So how many banks did you have to visit before you ended up getting um, your business loan? I started with... Initially, I started with some big, big banks, big nationwide banks, you know, and uh, they don't, they're not even worth looking at if you're starting your own new business because they want all kinds of years of experience and this and that and da, da, da. Well, how can you have years of experience if you've never started yeah, a business before and you're looking they to wanted, start your... One of the big banks wanted three years of restaurant experience before they'd even look at it and it's like, all right, whatever, mm-hmm. I'll just go to the next bank. And that's what I told every bank. I'd come in and I'd say, look, here's my business plan. And I'm not taking no for an answer. If you can't fund me, you need to tell me what I need to do for you to fund me. And then the funds. Okay. And then I went to one bank. I was going to get them, but they couldn't, um, they couldn't do the SBA Patriot Express loan program, which is for veterans. It's instead of, uh, the, the Patriot Express, the, instead of an SBA loan being like seven years, it's you can stretch it out to ten years. Oh, because because you are a veteran. Yeah. Oh, that's and very cool. 
it's very beneficial when it comes to like you know doing your cash flow so your loan payments are a little lower Mm -hmm. so you have more cash flow for operating costs and stuff like that and it's always seems like the cash flow is what kills a business sinks a business if you don't have the cash flow up front you're going to be hurting yeah that's what it was and the one bank i went to initially they probably would have funded the funded it but they couldn't do this the patriot express loan program and i felt i felt obligated to use it i could have did a a regular sba why not though i mean if you have that opportunity i felt obligated to use i i served served for the country you know and i was like all right i want to utilize it take advantage of this so then i went with a another local bank very cool so like how it's all local and stuff yep. so now tell us um do you guys do catering with the pita vet yep we do we've done a lot of catering actually a lot of the hospitals do it uh, a lot of optometry dental clinics uh it's a great option everybody's always happy with it you know? so what do you guys all offer on your catering menu how does that work um pretty much anything we do like meat platters so if you want to do a meat platter you can pick you it would be like 10 pitas and then they're all cut in half. So then you get like 20 halves. Okay. And you put them on a nice fancy little tray and stuff like that. And uh, you can mix and match, do whatever you want. You know, we have a Greek a Greek platter, which is all like the Greek style, like the gyro and the chicken suvaki. Okay. And the falafel, those kind of pitas. What's a falafel? A falafel? It's like a chickpea patty. I don't know. Do you know what a chickpea is? Chickpea, chickpea is, like, is like a bean. Yep. Yeah, it's like, a, in this sense, yeah. It's a, a bean. pinto bean. Sort of, yeah. Yeah, okay. And it's just mushed up, crunched up. It's good. And it's kind of like our hummus is also chickpea. It's chickpea spread. Okay. But the falafel is like a more drier version, and it comes in a ball. And then we put our secret sauce on it and grill it up, and it's it's very tasty. Very nummy. Yep. Very good. It's a very good vegan option. Oh. That's oh. another big thing. The pita pit is very vegan friendly. Very cool. And we have tons of vegetarian stuff and then tons of vegan dishes also. I'm definitely one of those people I'm trying to go raw. So, yeah. so kind of like the vegan type yeah. of thing and try not to eat a whole. So I really like the idea. Yeah. And I, I did not know that you guys did the salads, which mm. is really good to know because, I mean, that's that's more something that I would do versus I'm sure the pita pit bread yeah. is tasty and very oh, delicious, but I prefer great. salads. So that's that's very good yeah. to know for all those people out there. I actually had a turkey salad the other day, yesterday. It was really good. So what is your favorite pita? What is my favorite Every pita is my favorite. Oh, good answer. Okay, come on. Way to be political for all your 25 different flavors. All right. Um, it's tough to say. It's like every every day I'm on a different kind of kick, and I'm always trying new things because it's fully customized. We can try, okay, I'm going to have a BLT, but today I'm going to put like hummus and avocado on it and a little bit of ranch or a little bit of jalapeno ranch. So it's kind of you know. like that where you can go in and you say, I want this, but then you add all of the stuff that you want to add. Kind of like yep. almost like a Subway, but different with the, because it's pita and yeah. it's and better tasting on better. Options, way more options to choose from. Way Very more. cool. You know, 36 different options pretty much up to. Wow. It depends. And then we have, I don't even remember how many sauces. We just keep adding new sauces all the time. Very cool. So that's, now. That's oh. why I just think every pita tastes, every, you can make the same pita every day. But you can change the way it tastes every day. So it's different. You can do a Philly steak with ancho chipotle sauce, which is popular, which is going to give you a good spicy Philly steak. But the next day you can do ranch and mayo with it. It's going to give you a different type of taste, you know. Nice. Is, our most popular is the gyro. Oh, yeah, that was, my, that was my next question, what the most popular was. Number one is the gyro, and number two is the Philly steak. Are you guys always kind of coming out with new menu items too? Uh, no, not really. Sometimes we'll change up. Uh, like we have our local, which is our own local creation, which I came up with. It, um, corporate kept telling me the corporate guys that were out there when we opened the store, they were like, "You North Dakotans, what is with you and all your meat pitas? Huh. You sell so many meat pitas, you know." And it's just like, "All right, I'm going to make up a pita called the Meatitarian." Oh, for funny! You know? So it's that's our local pita. It's chicken, bacon, ham, turkey, Philly meat with onions and green peppers, and then we suggest. Our horseradish Dijon sauce on it. That's a lot of meat. I I'm pretty sure I'm gonna claim to fame that it is the meatiest pita of all pita pits in the in the world. So do you get that one trademarked yet? No, not yet. Got to work on that. Corporate laughed at though. They like they like the idea and they're and I mean it is exp- it's a little ex- a little more expensive. It's eleven dollars mm-hmm. compared to like six thirty five, but it's got like 
five times the meat of anything and it's huge and you will not go home full after eating that thing oh i'm sure i'm sure not yeah, that'd be the one that my husband would definitely order. He yeah. likes he likes his meat, especially after working out. He needs the protein and yeah. all that type of stuff. Yeah, that's another good thing about our, our pitas. They're all loaded with protein. It's all high protein, lower fat, you know, that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. So now, are you guys, since you guys are a local business, I mean, are, are you planning to get more involved with, like, some local organizations? What is it that you guys are doing there? Yeah. Actually, um, I just teamed up with the Dakota Wizards. And I teamed up with the Bismarck Bobcats. And what are you doing with both of them? Uh, we're going to do some promotional stuff, you know, like the mascot bowling and stuff like that with the Wizards. And we got some ticket back sponsorship or ticket back coupons for Dakota Wizards tickets. Uh, same thing with the Bobcats. We got some we got some nice big on ice logos that we're going to have at the VFW Arena and some ticket coupons, that kind of good stuff. Now, seeing how you guys are very healthy, there is this uh, Go Bismarck um, campaign where yeah. it's out there for telling people on, on healthy choices and oh, <laughs> there's a little fly that's kind of bugging you. Sorry about that. Uh, so they're, they're kind of helping people, you know, become more healthy, making our community more healthy. What are you doing with the Go Bismarck campaign? Uh, the Go Bismarck Man and Organization is an organization that uh, a lot of a lot of places have teamed up with them uh both the hospitals med center and st a's are on board with them uh the custer health program is with them the ymca is teamed up with them they are looking for healthier options for just the community to get out do exercising you know work out that kind of stuff now they started going around to restaurants and they came up with a criteria for menu items for calories sodium fat you know and they want to find some go approved menu items in restaurants Hmm. and they've teamed up with quite a few now i think they're at about like eight or nine restaurants and they teamed up with mine and it's like 52 percent of my menu is go approved now oh wow i could almost i could almost i'd put money on it that my restaurant has the most go approved menu items in any restaurant well especially since you can then turn it into any sort of salad option that you would like Yeah. yeah definitely makes it even more healthy yep so now tell me, you uh, actually recently were approved for opening up a store in Dickinson. Yep. So what are you doing there, and when are you expecting to be open? Um, we're still in the works with the landlord slash developer. Um, he was hoping to break ground this week sometime-ish. Um, I'm looking at hopefully November, something like around the November time frame that it'll be open up. So now, are you guys going into an existing facility, or where nope, where are you going? it's a brand new strip mall that's being built uh, right next to the Dickinson Press. It's on the corner of Villard and State Avenue. Okay. So now, is there any other pita pits in, in North Dakota? Yep, there's two in Fargo, two in Grand Forks, and one other in Minot. Oh, okay. So now you own, then, the Bismarck. Then and... I own the Bismarck one, and then I'll own the Dickinson one. The, um, there's a separate owner... He owns the Minot and Grand Fork stores. And then uh, corporate actually owns the two Fargo stores now. Are you looking to uh, break ground in Williston at all? Are you looking to get the rights up in that area? There's potential, you know, up there, but I haven't really thought about it. I've thought about Williston, but I, it's just in the back of my mind right now. Just because, you know, the oil boom is great out there. It's great out in Dickinson. People always say you're going to have such trouble finding heart, finding work everywhere you go. Mm-hmm. You know, or, or finding labor. There's Yeah, there's rumors, you know, oh, they're paying people so much money at, or just to work at McDonald's, which it isn't true because I've looked. I've mm-hmm. done the research. They're paying, you know, starting out what I'm paying employees here in Bismarck. Um, Williston, on the other hand, that, that, I guess, is very hard up there to find good workers and reliable workers because I, I haven't been up there but recently, but I guess it's just... But with all the city, oil booming and... Know, I guess it's just a disastrous zoo up there. It, yeah. It, Which is good, and they say there's no places to eat, you know, or there's a line out to the door every day. But I'm more focused in just staying down here for now. You know? Getting your feet wet and continuing, yeah. you know, to learn... Yeah. Very cool. So tell me, what um, when it comes to being a new small business owner, what has been the most rewarding part of it all for you? Um, I don't know. I guess it's just bringing, bringing something to Bismarck that people want. 
you know people they love the people everybody I talk to you you don't when you talk to somebody and you know you mention the pita pit or something like that people don't just say oh yeah I've eaten the pita pit I like the pita it's, it, as soon as the pita pit's brought up it's I love the pita pit they always use the love word they love it they don't just like it they love it and I think that's just cool and that's been the best part it. yeah Tell me now, um, you know, there's there were some stumbling blocks. I mean, because you started back in 2008, and the you know the um, like you said, the finding the location was a little bit difficult. What else about the process of starting your business would you have liked to change or learn from? Um, I like to say nothing. I would never change anything. And why is that? Just because everything is a learning experience, and if if you don't go through the the hard times, you're never going to learn from that. You know, and I think learning from everything that I've gone through with getting the business open, the hardest the hardest part is get, was getting the business open. Now that it's open and operating and I've learned so much from it, it's just, now it's just keep the motions going. Okay. And it's just, it, it's made things easier for me. So as a small business owner, a lot of people think that they, they want to go into small business because then they can be their own boss and work whenever they want, but... I mean, are you putting in the pretty much 60 hours oh, yeah. a week? I put in, when I, the first month and a half that I was open, I put in, at, I think it was like 110 hours a week, something like that, 115 hours. I can't remember what the calculation was, but I was there from 8 in the morning until 1 in the morning. Every single day, you know, I bet. And then, but then you finally, you start to get the hang of it. You start to figure out what we can do to get out of here earlier, you know, mm-hmm. and then you start figuring out. Next thing you know, I'm out by midnight. Next thing you know, I'm out by 11.30. You know, I can go run out and catch last call with my buddies, you know, or catch one drink before I got to get up and go to the store the next day, you know. And it's just gotten easier. Now it's, we're out of there by 10, 10.30 ish, something like we'll close the doors and we'll be out by 10.30. So are you up there usually every single day then? Yep. Yep. Except that during the summertime, I spent, I've taken a little vacation. Which is, which is, I'm sure you deserve. One week out every month. I've, kind of headed up to the lake you gotta do that kind of recharge yep. batteries in order to keep going yep. but it took you know when i opened i eventually brought on a manager and he's just been he's been amazing you know he loves doing what he's doing and he does a good job at it mm-hmm. so once you get a good manager i've found you know you gotta hang on to him because it's gonna make my job a lot easier too Mm -hmm. That makes sense. I mean, if you have a good employee, you definitely utilize their skill sets. So now for somebody that is wanting to just open up their own small business, what would be the best advice that you could give them? Um, If you have something that you think is going to work, go for it. Don't stop. That's kind of what I did. I knew this. I knew the pita pit was going to be a hit and I just, I I did not give up on it. I wasn't going to give up on it. It didn't matter. Like the, the financing Granted, that's like the one thing everybody worries about. Where am I going to get the funds for this? And it, it's just, you got to go to the bank and ask them, what, what do I need to, to get this financed? And they'll tell you. And then do the work. Yep. And then just start working at it. Very cool. Well, congratulations to you and being so young and so successful with opening up your first pita pit and soon to be your second pita pit and then eventually your third, third. pita pit. So where where do you expect to be in 10 years' time real quick? 10 years' time? That's tough to say. Uh, 10 years' time would be renewing the franchise agreement for my first store. Oh, okay. <laughs> Very cool. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that's what's going to happen. Either I renew it or I don't know. I don't know. Well, I'm sure you'll probably end up renewing it. So now where where for people, so if they want to um, learn more, where should they go? Where are you at? What's your number? And all that good stuff. Um, we're located 2930 North 14th Street, right north of Space Aliens. Right north There's of Space Aliens. strip okay. mall that runs. It's got Pita Pit on the end cap, and then it's uh, AT&T, Little Caesars, and the National Guard. Okay. And our phone number is 751-4202. And our fax number is 751-4205. If people want to fax in yep. orders. And if they call, if you call in, we have a cool little easy fax menu that <laughs> will we'll fax over to you. And then you, if it's a big company and you can just make copies, give them out to your employees, they write them down and fax them back to us. And we'll deliver it or you can pick it up, whatever you want to do. 
Very cool. Well, congratulations again, and thank Thank you you. for coming on this edition of City Chat with City Magazine. And everyone, make sure you head to thecitymag.com where you can download the September issue and read the story about Chris Volk and his Yes Award. And you can also watch past issues of this wonderful show, City Chat with City Magazine. Have a great day.